welcome. What an incredible word that we use and live out every day, especially here in church. We are welcomed every time we walk through the doors or at our homes, every single day when we go to church. It's one of the first things we say when we start this. And when we were all together, it's some of the first thing you really get a chance to be a part of. You're welcomed at the door by all of the greeters. You're welcomed in by your Sunday school teachers. And you're welcomed in by all of your friends or congregational friends or any one of that matter. The ones who ask you about how your test went that you were nervous about the last week at church. Or the ones that had showed up to your game that you were super nervous for. Or the one that the competition that you were super excited for that someone decided to show up to. And this welcome is so incredibly important to us as a Christian faith. In Matthew, it says, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. It's our calling as Christians to welcome others. And as a previous graduate, anyone in, who's ever had a senior, a senior son, senior daughter, senior gra grandchild, senior anyone, you know the stress or the struggle of finding the perfect college. And I was one of those kids who went not only with my older cousin to all of his college visits, but to all of mine. And on number 15 college visit uh, back in my junior year, I would, walked into my Sunday school class and I was telling my Sunday school teacher about how I was going to Nashville. I was going to go visit Vandy and I was gonna go see what their music program was like. And he said, hey, you should go look at Belmont University. And I never heard of Belmont. Most people haven't unless you've been really in the music scene. And he said, it's a really good Christian college. It's not very big. and you might like it. So I went home, I did some research. It is only about 10,000 students. It's, a, uh, it's originated in Baptist, uh, in Baptist Seminary, and it has no football team. And for someone who spent the past four years of her life and two years of her life being the head drum major in marching, to not have a marching band to go to was a bit of a stretch, to say the least. But I respect him, so I really wanted to go see. I trust his opinion, so we went. And we, I mean, we walked out the back door and immediately got lost. And there were two guys who were standing there on Belmont's campus, and they turned around and they were like, hey, can we help you? And we were like, yes, we're lost. We're trying to go to the B Belmont day and see what it's like. And they said, oh, that's wonderful. And of course, anyone who's faculty on any college will ask you where you're going or what you think or what you're gonna study. And I told them I was going to study either music or music business. And the man who was talking to me looked and said, oh, well, I'm the dean of the music business school, and this is the dean of the music school. And in the first five minutes of being on campus, I had already met the two probably most important people of my college career. And in that moment, I really was welcomed, not only by the faculty and the home of Belmont University, but the welcome that I received from my Sunday school teacher who had shown me this place, who had given me this chance, and, the, and has helped with probably one of the biggest decisions of my life because that's where I will be in the fall. And what's crazy about this welcome is that there's the flip side to it. You have to be able to receive this welcome. Part of being a Christian is learning how to give the welcome but also how to receive it. It says, whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes the name of the righteous person will receive the reward of a righteous. And in my mind, when I read this, I realized the prophet and the righteous man, the prophet was usually the disciple or a wandering traveler who was going and preaching. So they didn't have a home base. They didn't have a home to go to with AC at night. And they didn't always have food that they were for sure going to get because we didn't have a McDonald's down the road. So they were relying on the people in the city that they were going to to welcome them in, to welcome them with a home, shelter, and food. They had to learn how to receive this welcome, to be able to hold on to what they were giving. 
The same thing goes for the righteous person, someone who we see as an outstanding Christian, the one who maybe does the cookie fellowships or the potlucks, and they have to be welcoming to everyone that comes, anyone in any shape and form comes to them, but they also have to be able to receive the food that was brought to help, be able to receive the help that they need, because Lord knows we can't do it all by ourselves. And as it continues, the part that really sticks with me is, and whoever gives even a cup of cold water, plastic or china, that's a little add-in. That's not actually in the verse. (laughs) The little ones, in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. And this idea of the cup, being able to hand just a small cup of water to anyone is so powerful. We have this opportunity as Christians to pass along something so simple, something so easy as a kind smile or just paying attention to someone when they need it and passing along this cup. When I read this, I think of a story. It's a TED Talk. You're welcome to look it up online. It's called The Lollipop Moment. But a general story, um, She, the girl who's telling the story is not ready for college. She, on the day before, she's sitting in the hotel room and she tells her parents, I can't do this. And her parents are like, okay, we love you. Just go to the next, go to the first day. And if you can't do it, we'll take you home. She goes and she's in line and she realizes in that moment, she can't do it. She's going home and she feels peace. She goes to tell her parents when this guy with a goofy hat walks out of the building and is passing out lollipops to everyone in line. And he gets to her and he stops and he looks at her and turns to the guy standing next to her and says, you need to hand a lollipop to the beautiful woman standing behind you. And of course, everyone blushed. Everyone was super nervous and she takes the lollipop from him. And the man who had brought the lollipop says, look at that, first day away from home, she's already taking candy from a stranger. And everyone in every direction lost it. They all laughed, and for that moment, she realized that she wanted to stay. She's telling the man who brought the lollipop over to her this four years later. He has no idea about this story. They're still dating, and a year later, they got married, and he was invited to their wedding. The man goes on to say that he doesn't remember it. This is a funny moment where he changed someone's life in a profound way, and he believes he should remember it, but he doesn't. The deal with the lollipop moment is that we can reach our hand out with this cup, this small gesture, and we can make a huge impact on someone's life. And that is something incredible. Because we've made being a Christian, you have to do all these incredible things. You have to be this perfect, idealized human who has it all. But in all reality, you just have to be able to pass this cup along, reach out a healing hand, because you can change the world. There's not one world. There's only eight billion understandings of it. And if you can change one person's, then you can change the world. Now, on top of this welcome, the biggest thing that we need to remember is that we also have to learn how to receive. We have to know how to receive that welcome. And the greatest welcome we can ever be given is the welcome of God's into his arms, into his kingdom, into his presence. We are brought into his world through his welcome. And all we have to do is open our hearts to his welcome. And through his welcome, we can create an even larger welcome to the people who stand around us. And that is a gift from God. Amen.